Hey everyone, Ryan here. So just a few years ago, if you wanted to buy a smartwatch, you only had a few options available. Things have changed now and just like any other piece of consumer electronics, you have now more options to choose from than ever and it can get really confusing soon which might lead to a wrong purchase. So be sure to watch this video till the end and I'll share with you everything you need to know. So before anything else, it's very important to know about uh, your smartwatch of choice and its compatibility with your phone. You know, most watches from reputable brands are both Android and iOS compatible, although there might be differences between uh, the features you get on an iPhone and Android device. But if you get yourself an Apple Watch, then it's only gonna be compatible with iPhone. So technically speaking, if you have an iPhone, then you have more options available. Well, almost. On the other hand, there are some uh, feature limitations on the iPhone that we'll get to. So in short, always confirm that the watch works with your phone. Next, you need to decide whether you actually need a smartwatch or perhaps a simple activity tracker or a more advanced uh, fitness watch. Having said that, the line between activity trackers or fitness watches and smartwatches has blurred so much so that most of uh, smartwatches have many fitness tracking features and many of the simplest, most affordable uh, activity trackers offer at least some kinds of smartwatch features. So perhaps it's worth com comparing the two types and seeing what problem they're supposed to solve in the first place. Generally speaking, when we talk about smartwatch features, we're mainly concerned about doing things we would normally do on our phones, but instead on a watch. Things like getting uh, notifications of all sorts, receiving and sending messages, taking calls, uh, checking the weather, etc. On the other hand, the main function of a fitness watch is monitoring your health and well-being. And this ranges from a simple uh, step counting to more sophisticated stuff like 24-7 uh, heart rate monitoring and ECG. If you ask me, I would say everyone should have a fitness watch or a smartwatch with more fitness uh, tracking capabilities. But anyways, usually many entry-level fitness watches have at least a step counting and sleep tracking features. But just because your watch comes with these features doesn't mean they're very accurate. In fact, none of them are 100% accurate. It's just that some of them are more reliable than the others. For example, when I reviewed the Fitness Sense watch, which is a combination of health, fitness, and smartwatch, I was so disappointed at the step counter feature as it was really unreliable. Having said that, a lot of these are related to the software and the underlying algorithm. So technically one could hope that these companies will improve their algorithm over time. And that's actually true for some brands. Anyways, know your priorities. Is it uh, staying connected to your phone or monitoring your health and maybe getting some motivation to better improve your health and well-being? If you equally care about both of these, I think one of the best options out there right now is the Venue 2 Plus from Garmin, which also has a touch AMOLED display. But also if you do any sports competitively, uh, you know, like triathlons and marathons, then having a watch specifically designed for those activities may be better, better suited for you. Uh, for example, if you are a runner or you like running, Depending on your budget and needs, one of the Garmin Full Runner watches would be ideal for you. Okay, so I mentioned the display, and there are actually different types of displays uh, with their pros and cons. Uh, in terms of the brightness and color accuracy and vividness, the AMOLED displays are great, uh, but the Retina display of the Apple Watches are great as well, even though they're not AMOLED. Another type of uh, display we see a lot is a transflective display, which is in fact a type of LCD. You know, whereas the visibility in AMOLED displays can sometimes struggle under direct sunlight, transflective displays, on the other hand, have great sunlight visibility. Now, these can uh, actually come in color or monochrome, and beside the fact that they're very visible under direct sunlight, they also have significantly longer battery life than a display like uh, AMOLED or one with backlight LED like Retina. Not only that, with these displays, there is the possibility of adding solar charging, whereas you don't see solar charging on a watch with an AMOLED display. So on paper, some of these watches can offer unlimited battery life with solar charging. For example, a while ago, I reviewed this Garmin Instinct 2 Graphite Camo Edition, which by the way is a beautiful watch, and I had a lot of fun wearing it that comes with a monochrome uh, transflective display with a battery life of up to 28 days in the smartwatch mode. Although in real life it's more or less 20 days, which is still unbelievable for a smartwatch. The Instinct 2 uh, has also the solar models, 
which are $100 or euros and more expensive than the base models. TFT LCD is another type of display that some smartwatch and fitness watch manufacturers use. The main reason this type of display is used is because they're very easy and cheap to make. And one example is the Polar uh, Ignite budget watch. And even though at first glance, uh, when you look at the display, it looks great. When you compare it to a watch with an AMOLED display, the colors aren't that great. And despite the fact that this watch has a touch screen, it actually isn't that um, responsive. Also, since TFT LCDs use a separate backlight, they can be thicker as well, as opposed to the AMOLED displays that have no backlight and each uh, pixel can turn on and off individually. So basically, if you spend a lot of time outdoors, ideally you'd want to consider a transflective display, not only for better visibility, but also for better battery life. So as you can see, there can be different types of uh, displays that affect everything from visibility, interactivity, and user experience to battery life and pricing. There is even a type of display called e-ink by which you can only see black and white colors and the battery life can be many months. But it's not commonly used, uh, especially these days. Here's an example of how it looks from an old Nokia, not Withings, uh, tracker. Now let's talk a little about sleep tracking and comfort. Why comfort, you may ask? And it's because you need to know that wearing your uh, watch to bed is not going to be the most natural thing to do. And usually the bigger and thicker uh, and bulkier the watch, the most uncomfortable it's going to be. Not to mention that you need to wear your watch snug to get more accurate readings. And that itself adds to the discomfort. So if you if sleep tracking is your highest priority, then going for something less bulky makes sense. For example, I myself uh, could really benefit from a more advanced multi-sport fitness watch like the Phoenix 7 or the Apex 2. But since sleep tracking and comfort are really important to me, I opted for this Venue 2 Plus for the time being. Now, when it comes to sleep tracking, some watches track all the sleep cycles, some don't. For example, the new uh, Soon to 5P can only measure your deep sleep and time awake. And by the way, it doesn't even do a very good job in doing that. Some like the Withings watches don't measure the REM sleep, claiming it is really difficult to accurately measure it. And some other brands like this uh, Garmin watch do measure all light, uh, deep and REM sleep cycles. And believe it or not, paying more for a watch doesn't necessarily mean it's got a more accurate sleep tracking feature. It's all about continuously reading data from a few sensors and interpret that data using an algorithm. So if sleep tracking is the only thing or perhaps the most important thing uh, you care about, then please do not overspend. Also, if you're like me and you want to know about all your sleep cycles, then make sure the watch you're buying actually does measure them all. Another uh, brand that has a good track record in tracking sleep with all the different sleep cycles is Fitbit. Uh, for example, Fitbit Charge 5 and Fitbit Sense. The catch with the Fitbit brand though is that not only do you have to pay for the watch itself, in order to fully take advantage of all the detailed analysis and insights that Fitbit provides, you need to pay for their monthly premium membership. It's of course up to you to decide if it's uh, fair to pay another fee every month to see more detailed information and other features. Uh, what I like about Garmin is that um, there is no extra fees you'd have to pay. You know, you buy the watch, you get everything. Apple also has a Fitness Plus subscription plan that uh, you can join if you want to take advantage of uh, all of the benefits. All right, so whether you buy a true smartwatch or fitness watch with some smartwatch capabilities, the most important smartwatch features are getting notifications and replying to messages. If you buy the latest um, Apple Watch, for example, then not only can you send messages by swiping on the QWERTY keyboard, but you can also take uh, phone calls directly on your watch, which is great. And uh, if you get the cellular model, then you don't even need to have your phone with you. But even for a non-cellular model, having a microphone and speaker on your watch is an amazing feature and it allows you to stay connected to your phone even more. For example, my Venue 2 Plus watch has a mic and speaker as well, which allows me to make and receive calls via Bluetooth using my phone uh, and even use my phone's assistant. And Galaxy Watch 4 uh, is another popular smartwatch which allows you to make and receive calls on your watch. 
The problem with watches uh, other than the Apple Watch is that if you have an iPhone, iPhone, then you cannot reply to messages, you know, even if your watch has this feature. And also you can customize the notifications on your watch. And the only option would be to turn on and off notifications on your phone itself and not specifically for the watch. So these are the biggest uh, feature limitations as far as I know, if you have an iPhone and a watch other than the Apple Watch. And also if you have a Galaxy Watch 4, then you can't use it with an iPhone at all. Now a smartwatch is not really a smartwatch if you can't install some apps on it, right? I mean, the Apple Watch and Galaxy Watch 4 are quite unrivaled in this area. Also remember that while uh, you can uh, use Galaxy Watch 4 with any Android device to take advantage of all of its features, you actually should have a Samsung phone. But there are still many fitness and smart uh, watches that allow you to install uh, third-party apps. Uh, you can even install apps on a Garmin Instinct 2 watch or a Venue 2 Plus but they're more or less fitness related apps. Okay, so many of today's smartwatches are shipped with built-in GPS, but not all of them show you a full-blown map. For example, this Venue 2 Plus has the GPS receiver, but it doesn't show you a map for navigation. But if you get yourself a cheaper watch like the Suunto 5 Peak, then it has a feature called turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation, uh, where you can create a route in advance and then get a guided navigation only for that route. Whereas on a Galaxy Watch 4, you can actually get Google Maps on your phone, on your watch. And uh, on a Phoenix 7, uh, you can also get a uh, fully functional navigational map with lots of details. And on an Instinct 2, you can also find your way back home or where you started uh, with the traceback feature, uh, which is really cool. Um, and it's something that I personally tried but there is no actual map on the watch. All right, next, let's talk a little about battery life. See, no matter what kinds of uh, features a watch has and how amazing and beautiful it looks, the matter of the fact is that uh, battery life is one of the most crucial things for me. And I know for many of you guys, you know, I could easily get myself an Apple Watch 7 or a Galaxy Watch 4. They have a lot of features that my Venue 2 Plus does not have. Uh, for example, the ECG feature and some other things. But for me, charging my watch every day would be a pain in the neck. And that's exactly what you would get if you get yourself an Apple Watch or a Galaxy Watch, unless we see a breakthrough from Apple in the near future with the next um, Apple Watch. So if battery life is important to you, and by the way, this may not be the highest priority right now, but down the road, you might get sick of this daily charging thing. In fact, many of you guys have told me that you have either of these two watches and you're just tired of charging them every day. But for example, I only charge my watch every five to six days. So think about it. Charging your watch around four or five times a month, unless you use a GPS a lot and use the 24 seven SPO2 monitoring, versus charging it 30 times or more. But of course, if you look at the you know half full of the glass, taking off your watch on a daily basis and giving your wrist uh, some free time is actually good for your skin and any irritations. But especially if you spend a lot of time outdoors, then I would consider a watch with longer battery life. For example, you might be a trucker and you spend a lot of time on the road, then a watch like the Instinct 2 makes a lot of sense. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I really hope you liked and sub. Any questions for me, comment below, and I'll see you in the next video.